Hello and welcome to another episode in making a Oculus Quest game. So in this episode we are going to continue where we left off last week, more or less, but we're going to look at how we can destroy objects. So what I've done is I've gone into Blender and I've made this very highly detailed balloon model and I've exported it as an FBX file. Okay, so if I jump over back into Unity, I'm going to find that balloon that I've made. So I can drag this balloon model into my scene. I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I'll leave there for the moment. And what I want to do now is create a script for this balloon so that if it gets hit, uh, we can destroy it. So if I just go C Sharp script, I'm just going to call it. Um, I always like to call my classes uh, beginning with C, C for class. Um, okay, so I've got my C, C balloon script. There we go. Okay, so all I'm going to do is create a new function called void on collision enter and we can see it's automatically finishing it off for us and I'm just going to say destroy. Uh, what am I going to destroy? This game object. So if I'd say destroy game object um, and that's it. When, when it gets hit by something it will delete. I also want to delete the thing that hits it. So if I just say destroy um, collision dot game object I don't want the bullet to keep on traveling or in this case the pool ball um, if you want to you you can that is your choice but I just want it to stop going any further um, okay so that's it I'm gonna press control save control s to save it back into unity obviously it'll compile that script and now I can add the script where it's finally done it no don't ask again okay so now I can drag, drag this onto the balloon. So if I just go drag um, C balloon, I could now duplicate this a couple of times just so I can have a couple of balloons. Control D to duplicate. Nope. Shift D. Why is it not doing it? I'm in the wrong place. That's why. There we go. Finally. Control D to duplicate. It's because I've been in Blender for the past a uh, few hours with something else. So now I've got three balloons in my scene. So I'm going to go on to build settings. I'm just going to make sure I've added the current scene, which I have, which is this scene. I'm just ticking the box. That's the only one I want. Um, and I can just press build and run. It'll obviously out what I want to do. I'm just going to call this test 2B and then I shall be with you in a moment. Okay, so we can see that I'm firing the pull balls like last time. I'm going to hit the balloon and it's not working. I know why. I know what I've done wrong. Okay, so in that quick test, we'll know it didn't destroy the balloons because we overlooked something really obvious. So I'm going to click on each of the balloons so I can make changes simultaneously. I'm going to come down and I'm going to add a collider. Um, I forgot to add the collision detection box. Uh, I'm going to add a sphere collider. Uh, we can see, if I, if I just press F, it should focus on all of them. Oh, just the one I've selected, fair enough. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so it gives the player a bit more chance, make it a bit easier. Oh, that's too far. Okay, I'm just going to press undo, I'm going to type it instead, so I'm going to put 0 0.02. Okay, so that's quite a big space, you might want to just play about with it a little bit. But this is how you can make games easier on the starter levels, by just changing the size of the collision. Um, so that now should be absolutely fine. I'm just going to go back on my sphere. Uh, yep, it's still rigid body, it's continuous uh, dynamic detection. So let's just try one more time. So file, uh, build and run. Okay, so we can see that it is now destroying each of the balloons. Um, but what I want to do is add add a little bit of movement. So I'm going to jump back into the code. And I'm going to make these balloons go up and down to make it feel a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to require three variables for this. I want to require, I want, I want maximum height. How far up and down is it going to go? How fast is it going to move? Uh, and where's the start height? Where is it? Where have you placed it in the screen? So it's going to be three units above the start height. So inside my start function, I'm going to have this bit where I grab the current position. Um, I then set the max, max height to our current position plus whatever you've set it to be. And then just to shake it up a little bit, I'm using a bit of randomness on the velocity. So each one will move up and down slightly from speed. Um, okay, so in our update function, I'm going to grab I'm going to grab the um, the current position. So I'm, I need to convert the position into a vector three, which is going to be temporary. So I can access the X, Y, Z. And this is very much uh, like Pong physics now. I'm just multiplying the vol velocity by how much time's lapsed from the previous frame and adding it to its height. Now, the next bit is just, again, it's Pong physics. If it reaches the top or it goes below the bottom, 
we just multiply the velocity by minus one. This will invert the speed. So it'll just bounce down. It's not very dynamic. You could use lerp or slurp functions for this. You could even keyframe animate it. Um, I'm just keeping it very simple for now. So now I want to assign this temporary variable back to the position and that will make our balloons move up and down. Okay, so let's go back into our code and let's wait for that to compile and let's build and test it. Okay, so you could see, see the balloons going up and down. Uh, and because I made those variables public, I could easily change how high I want them to go. I could change the, the speed that they're moving at. Now, just disappearing is not that interesting. What we want to do is create a little particle effect. Now, I'm no expert on particles. I normally cheat and jump straight to the asset store and pinch some, some nice, well-made ones. But if we just go onto a particle system, um, I'm going to just, yeah, we'll call this uh, balloon particles. Uh, like I say, I'm not going to go too far on this. I'm just going to go into this little bit. Uh, not that bit at all. Yep, over there. Particle system. There, that's the bit I want. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is duration. I'm going to make it just one second. I'm going to um, make this go a little bit faster. 3D button. No, that's fine. Start colour. I want this to be red because my balloon's red. What else do I need to do? I'm going to leave all those for now. Um, I'm just having a quick look through our options. I want to apply, there we go, gravity. I'm just going to make gravity 1 so that it should look like they're starting to come. Yeah, you can see up in this window they're starting to come back round. Um, that should do for the moment. Emission uh, rate over time. I'm just going to increase this because I want more to come out one to, you know, in one go. Max particles, I don't need that many. Let's bring it right down. Maybe that's not enough. We'll have a quick look. Okay. Um, and what I also want is shape. And I'm going to make this into a sphere so it just fully explodes. There we go. So we can see it's all kind of coming out now. This is not great. This is just a quick effect. And I'd recommend going look at some other people's tutorials on making particles. Um, colour over lifetime. So I'll take that. I could now make this uh, red. Yeah, that'll do. I can also make it transparent over time. So if I put the alpha, there we go. Make that there. So it should start fading away the further away they go. Okay, um, I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. But what I do want to do as well is, is add some sound effects. Um, so I've got balloon particles. Now I've already been and got a sound effect from, um, I've had this on my hard drive for years, I don't know where I got it from. I'm just going to go onto this and I'm going to drag the balloon part. In fact, nope, I'm going to add, I want to see to minimize this, so I've got a bit of space to work with. Add component, I need audio source. And there's audio source. And if I just drag the balloon pop on, so balloon pop onto there, um, I want to play it when it wakes up. So when this particle first starts, it's going to play. Um, I'll leave the sounds for the moment, but now we should be able to, to hear it pop when it, when it first starts. Let's just check, make sure we can hear things. <coughs> there we go, that'll do. Okay, so particles. What I'm now going to do is I need to go back into my code. Um, actually, before I do that, one more thing. I need to create this into a prefab. So if I just go into my scenes, my tutorial scene, I'm just going to drag balloon particles down. Um, so it's now a prefab. So it's got the particle system and the audio source. If I go back into my code, I'm now going to instantiate this object. So first of all, I need a public game object. Um, I like to do this so I can easily change things. I could hard code to find it, but by making it public, it makes it easier to change in the interface. So now, um, when we physically um, shoot the balloon, so we just before we destroy it, we are going to instantiate um, the particles. So what have we created there? It will create it at this current position, current rotation. We also want to destroy it. Um, but this time, we're going to put a delay into the destroy. So if I just put uh, destroy clone.game object, so it's cloned the particles, and it's going to destroy it after two seconds. Um, which should give us more of time. Again, please feel free to experiment with these and your own effects. So if I now come back into Unity, um, I'm going to make sure I assign this to all three balloons. So if that's a just finish compiling. So if I just select all three balloons, I can now drag the balloon particles onto that. And now we should be able to shoot our balloons. And just, just for the sake of spicing up a little bit, I'm going to a few more balloons. I'm going to uh, just duplicate these. So I'm just going to put a few in different places. 
So I feel like more like a shooting gallery. Um, I could also now change these max heights. I could, I could even make the max heights random, which would give the player less chance of um, sort of working out where they're going from and change the velocity a little bit. But okay, so let's uh, just save the project just in case it crashes. And I'm just going to go build and run. Now I might notice one little glitch there, there's still a particle explosion, uh, and that's because I forgot to delete the particle effect from the scene, but no problem. Okay, so the particle left in the scene, if we just click on balloon particles, um, and I'm just going to press delete, we've now got the prefab, and that's your scene made. In the next lesson we'll look at maybe just keeping track of, of some score points, and also moving around the scene itself. Okay, so I shall see you next time. And of course, don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and put a positive comment down below.